Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja and I want to welcome you back to another edition of Your Adrenal Fix. Today I want to talk to you about a case study in which a patient that I have working with me right now is a Hashimoto's patient and she is fatigued. She, well her main symptoms are she's got hypothyroidism, she's fatigued, she has brain fog, and she has insomnia. So those are the four things that we are working with and I thought it'd be really really inf informative for you to to understand how we work with uh, patients like this so that we can get an idea as to what we're going to do to fix them so and how it relates to adrenal fatigue because she doesn't even know it and if you're suffering with uh, hypothyroidism, cold all the time, can't lose weight, have brain fog, or, uh, losing your hair uh, and or you, you can't fall asleep then chances are your adrenals aren't working very well either and your doctor doesn't even believe in adrenal fatigue and you're looking for help and here you are so anyways the first thing that I typically do is I look over a person's blood test to get an idea as to what the main uh, low-hanging fruit is or what we call what the main deal breakers are and in her case her thyroid antibodies were 314 and they should be less than 34. So right away, what that means is she's Hashimoto's. She has an autoimmune phenomena. Her own immune system has created antibodies to attack the thyroid. And at this point, her thyroid is underactive. But her thyroid could also be overactive. Hashimoto's has a little bit of symptom of both. So you can be fatigued, brain fog, cold, heart palpitations, uh, excessive sweat, um, gastrointestinal dysfunction. Mostly when we have the patients fill out our questionnaires and we see a cluster of hyperthyroidism uh, symptoms and hypothyroid symptoms, then we typically can assume they're Hashimoto's and typically when we get their TPO antibodies back, we find out that they are greater than for 34. So anyways, some other things that we found um, were we just recently did some food sensitivity testing and on those food sensitivity testing she's already told me she's gone gluten free which is great because research shows that if you have Hashimoto's then there's a high correlation with the gluten peptide or gluten foods that are proteins that your body reacts to and then there's a cross uh, reaction against your own thyroid so it's best to eliminate gluten free but in her case which is exactly why I wanted to do this video with you uh, we got some amazing information which could be life-changing for her that is she reacted to cow's milk she reacted to oats she reacted to tapioca and she reacted to eggs so when I asked this patient what are you having for breakfast guess what she told me she's having uh, gluten-free oats uh, steel cut oats and eggs and those are the two main inflammatory foods that she eats every day and that creates inflammation in her body, creates leakiness of her gut, creates intestinal permeability, and ultimately what happens is she is creating inflammation causing a strain on her adrenal glands. And what happens is her hypothalamus tells the pituitary every time she eats gluten, or she doesn't eat gluten, she eats oats or she eats um, uh, eggs. Tapioca is a very common ingredient um, that they use in breads as a stick, sticky type of substance. It's also yucca, um, so a lot of patients eat that. And what happens is this HPA access is constantly firing off every time she eats her foods. And that's causing this reaction here. So the hypothalamus tells the pituitary, hey, you got to settle that adrenal gland. Um, you got to settle that inflammation. Tell the adrenal glands to secrete some cortisol so we can settle the inflammation. Pituitary says, okay. Let's get that adrenal gland to secrete cortisol so we can settle inflammation. And sure enough, her inflammation is settled with the adrenal glands. And that continues to go on and on and on and on to eventually the thyroid needs to work as well, but the feedback loop is broken. And what happens is the hypothalamus and the pituitary, because they're overworked from the, all the adrenal gland uh, uh, signaling, then ultimately she starts to wear down her TSH. And that's exactly what we see. We see her TSH being 
0.13. And typically, um, TSH, if it's low like that, is erroneously thought of as being hyperthyroid. That means that the, the, the doctors will typically look at your blood work and see if your TSH is really, really low, they typically will assume, oh, this person must have hyperthyroid because they their TSH is low. The hypothalamus is telling the pituitary, hey, slow down. You don't need to tell the thyroid to work because it's already working so much and you can slow down, which in effect, it's actually a hypothyroid as a result of a Hashimoto's problem. Hopefully that made sense to you. Um, so, so you can see that every single day of her life, she's having eggs, she's having oats, she's having dairy, she's having cheese. She's sensitive and has an intolerance, not an allergy, but it's a sensitivity or intolerance to these foods. Every time she eats them, she's breaking that HPA axis. And that's a big problem. So the other things we looked for on her blood test was any other immune stressors. And what we found was we found that her white blood cell count was four when it should be between five to eight. That's from a functional range. From a lab range, it shows it should be between three and 10. So it's coming back as a normal finding, but typically when it's low like that from a functional range, what that means is she's potentially um, dealing with a long-term stressor in her body, like a virus. And if that virus is wrecking havoc on her immune system, that also is causing an attack and, and resulting in thyroid antibodies with her. So what we're doing right now with her is we're putting her on a six-week removal diet. She's going to be going strict paleo with some vegetables and low glycemic fruits like anything that has a pit like a plum or a peach. Um, even blueberries, believe it or not, are low glycemic. You want to stay away from the melons, the watermelons, the bananas because those are very high glycemic and that's going to create a, a spiking of your blood sugar levels and ultimately that's going to mess up with some of your adrenal glands. So we're doing that for six weeks. We even haven't even done any adrenal gland um, testing and that's next. But I can tell you she's going to have an adaptive or maladaptive response where she's not going to be secreting cortisol through the entire day efficiently to deal with her stress. Stressors. And that's why she's fatigued, she has brain fog, and can't sleep. So these are a lot of the things that you need to do to identify what you can do to fix your A, thyroid problem, not just with TSH, because at this point it's an autoimmunity, and one of the big triggers to your autoimmunity is food sensitivities. Another trigger is some kind of low-grade infection or bacteria infection, virus, heavy metal toxicity. All of these things are going to create a breakdown of your HPA axis, and it's going to cause a breakdown of your HPT axis, which is your hypothalamus pituitary thyroid. So hopefully this shed a little bit of light on your Hashimoto's or your food sensitivities or your gut problems or your viruses or your bacteria, and how that ultimately affects your adrenal gland functioning. Um, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. As you can see, I got my hair cut. I would love a comment, a feed, some kind of share or like, or just tell me if you like my hair this way or if you don't. It's just so much easier. I can get up and go and I don't have to sit there and get the curling iron out and curl it in the blow dryer. It just, it's just wash and go. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this version of your adrenal fix. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Check out my blog at Adrenal Fatigue Society and I look forward to giving you some relief in your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.